or whether or not he was inviting Andy Roddick, James Blake, and the entire U.S. Davis Cup team to his mother's house <laughs> to play cards, which he did do. <laughs> Ross was fantastic at bringing people together. And when I was attacked earlier this summer, I didn't really want to talk about it because I'm a guy, guys don't talk about that. But eventually I called Ross, things are real when you finally tell it to Ross. And it wasn't so much what he said to me in that conversation. It was that two weeks later, without any prompting, he called me back and he said, I know you said that you were okay. And at first, everyone always says that they're okay. But how are you doing now? Because I don't think you are doing okay. And guys, guys don't do that for other guys. But Ross, Ross was willing to reach out. And since Ross has passed, many people have turned to me for advice. And I'm not sure that I really have any to dispense. I can only tell you how I have found solace. Since I met Ross, I still do, from time to time, stick my foot in my mouth. But when I do, I'm a little more candid. And when I'm asked to host the poker tournament, a poker tournament that I'm honestly not fully ready to host, I will not only accept that offer, but I will accept it because it will bring people together. And when I see someone struggling, they might not be on my team, but when I see someone struggling, I will take that risk and I will reach out. And these changes, these changes in me, they have nothing to do with Ross passing. They have everything to do with Ross's commitment to living. Ross Smith was not in the business of reinventing himself so that he could have a new look. Ross was in the business of continually reinventing himself because Ross Smith was in the business of living. And I find more than just solace in that. I believe it carries on. I know that it carries on. And I also know this. Knowing Ross made me a little more Ross. <laughs> and I can certainly, I can certainly, most certainly live with that. Thank you.